गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग प्रिंसिपल सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल रिसोर्स आवर रिसोर्स पर्सन इज नॉट एबल टू जॉन टिल नाउ सो वील बी वेटिंग फॉर एन अदर फाइव मिनिट्स मोर भुनीसा ठीक है हेलो हेलो हेलो
हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस यस पाकिजा म्यूट हो ऐसे म्यूट हो ऐसे गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरीवन प्रेजेंट हियर इट गिव्स मी एन इमेंस प्लेजर टू स्टार्ट दिस वीक लॉन्ग ऑनलाइन वर्कशॉप वन मिनट प्लीज 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 वन Uh, good morning and warm greetings to to everyone present here it gives me an immense pleasure to start this week long online workshop iqsc coordinator Dr. Surajit Sekhar Sir, Gorgaon College, Reader in Intellectual Property Law, Dr. Enrico Bonadio Sir, the City Law School in Berlin, a large number. I am Dr. Pakistan Convention. Really welcome all of you and all those listeners or viewers. i welcome all of you to this very important week long online workshop on intellectual property rights for the promotion and protection of innovations innovations organized by iqsc gorgaon college in collaboration with dpiit iprcr tejpur university and ipeg the city law school university of london i am very glad to introduce the theme of this student centric and faculty centric workshop on ipr the workshop will provide a forum for creating awareness exchange of innovative ideas and to learn about the role of intellectual property rights play in encouraging innovation and creativity creating awareness about intellectual property rights among the masses can assist in handling issues relating to ipr india day to day activities this week long workshop is intended to cover various aspects of ipr like patents copyrights trademarks etc the technical sessions will be led by the speakers having thorough knowledge in the subject who have been practicing in the field for many years the expected participants of the program include faculty research scholars students and grassroots innovators commencing today with a talk on protecting your creations with a strategy will be followed by a series of technical sessions delivered by esteemed resource persons from the different prestigious institutions including uk germany sri lanka 
as well as India. The agenda of the workshop also include an innovation idea competition among students with the theme innovative ecosystem to encourage and celebrate youth-led innovation, creativity, and to recognize the potential of young people to find new and better solutions that support the transition to a sustainable future. As the first agenda of today's program, I would like to now request our respected principal sir, Dr. Saibasasi Mohanta sir, to kindly deliver the inaugural speech. Sir, please do the honor. Thank you so much. A very good morning to you all. Respected Professor Pritam Deb, uh, DPIIT Chair Professor of Tespur University, Dr. Surajit Saikya, Coordinator IQVC Gorgaon College, Dr. Enrico Bonario, Reader in Intellectual Property Law from the City, of, City Law School of University of London, Dr. Pakiza Begum, Convener of this workshop, respected teachers, research scholars, and my dear participants. At the very outset, on behalf of the Fraternity of Gorgaon College, I would like to welcome you all to the week-long international workshop on intellectual property rights for the promotion and protection of innovations. This is indeed a very excellent, it's an excellent endeavor on the part of the organizers that they have been organizing a week-long workshop on intellectual property rights that has been, uh, in, uh, that has been recognized as an international rights and that is incorporated in the Article 27 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And intellectual property rights at present has been recognized as the legal rights that protect creations and innovations resulting from intellectual activities in various fields of industry, academics, science, literature, and, <clears throat> and arts, uh, art and culture. So uh, at, uh, in the present context, it has been gaining a great importance in the academic parlance as well as uh, in the non-academic or non-scholastic uh, non, non, non areas also. So uh, I definitely would like to offer my sincere thanks to the organizers. And I would also offer my sincere thanks to the Tezpur University DPIIT and the City Law School of University of London for collaborating with us uh, to organize this, uh, organize this week-long international workshop on intellectual property light, uh, rights. And I would also like to offer my sincere gratitude to all the esteemed resource persons who have consented, who have given, who have, uh, who are going to give their valuable times to the, to us, and to address the, uh, address this international, uh, international workshop on intellectual property rights. And I, I, I would definitely uh, be happy if the deliberations, if the, if the, if the discussions that would be taken place in this week-long workshop will definitely, I believe, will definitely believe the students as well as teachers and resource, research scholars. I hope this event would be a great success. And with this hope, and I also, uh, again, I would like to welcome you all. And uh, now I would like to formally declare the session is open. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. My sincere thanks for always being supporting us in all our endeavors and inspiring us to conduct various activities. Now to start with the first session, I would like to welcome the speaker of our first session, Professor Pritam Dev, sir, who is a well-known educationist and hold the position of DPIIT Chair Professor in Tezpur University. He is a nationally recognized scholar and teacher in the fields of IPR, patent, patent cooperation treaty, and trade secrets. He has been constantly providing technical supports guiding the innovators and creators for 
creating and securing an IPR concierge ecosystem. Sir also been working for initiating many industry academia research collaboration as part of the efforts initiated for creating a pro industry research platform in the university. His research achievements include nine applied patents and two granted software copyrights, besides numerous research papers in reputed journals. He envisions and has been working towards transforming Tezpur University IPR cell into a prime facilitating center for IPR related issues for the entire Northeast region. Professor Dave has received the prestigious Visitors Award for Technology Development for the year 2020. Sir has also held numerous visiting and honorary positions, including the Max Planck Fellow of Max Planck Institute, Germany, APS IUSSTF Professor at Rice University, USA, to name a few. Sir, we are indeed delighted and overwhelmed to have you with us, with us today. I would now uh, like to hand over the session to you, sir. But prior to that, I would like to draw the attention of the participants that we are live on Zoom as well as on the official YouTube page of our college. You can send your queries on the chat and comment box available on both the platforms. So without much ado, I would like to hand over the session to Pro Professor Pritam Dev, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. De Begum. Uh, I mean, good morning to all of you on board. My uh, sincere regard to the principal, esteemed principal of your organization, Dr. Mahanta and uh, all the faculty members of the Institute and uh, from other institutes. Let me share my screen first, and then I'm coming to the uh, discussion. Uh, is the slide visible uh, for me? Yes, sir, it is visible. And is it moving? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, so as I was telling, uh, I'm really overwhelmed to see the initiative taken by uh, the uh, esteemed organization, Gorga College. Uh, for conducting the workshop in, in international level uh, on this very important and contemporary uh, topic of, of the country of uh, the international level. We, we have been discussing this thing uh, in, in this part of the country for some time, but uh, this realization has come a little bit late uh, for us. Uh, we would have uh, been taken up the issues a uh, bit earlier than the Western countries, developed countries. We would have in a better position in executing the importance of this uh, subject. So my, my topic of discussion of today is protect your creations with a strategy. Uh, at the beginning of uh, the deliberation, uh, I must uh, mention that I am on transit uh, from, from uh, another uh, place. So uh, if there will be any uh, disruption, any uh, uh, noise in the presentation, please don't hesitate to mention me. I will try to rectify the issues at my end. So, uh, you know, innovation is critical to accelerating solutions. But we need to tap the global brain. You can, you can say that we need to tap the local brain, the national brain, and also the global brain for, for the latent ideas 
and intellectual property that are already available around us. This is very, very significant comment for us who are residing in the Northeast India, in particular in Assam. Our, our intellectual uh, assets around us within the society are not explored yet with, with appropriate potential. Now, if you come to the other side of the intellectual property, innovation promotes knowledge flow. Knowledge flow in, in, in both the directions, outside in and inside out. A process where the entities or individuals share their knowledge to come up with the solutions. What exactly the Gorgao College, Tejpur University, and other academic institutes are doing. Knowledge is useless unless it has a business model to deliver the value. The business model is also useless unless it is scalable. Scalability is also useless if it becomes an enemy of sustainability. Sustainability is also useless unless it makes people happy. I think this is what the, the uh, message this workshop is going to propagate through several deliberations by the esteemed uh, speakers and the interactions among the participants. Now, sharing the knowledge doesn't mean that it is for free. This enables open innovation process to entangle with intellectual property right. This is exactly what I am teaching in Tejpur University for, for quite a long time. Now, in one side, open innovations. Nowadays, we talk about open innovations. Open innovations provide solutions to problems real fast to put out fires. We need, we need the solutions at a very faster rate to accomplish the, the, the fruitful outcome for the society. Now, whereas the IPR is acted upon to relieve the bottlenecks and tighten the weakest links, so I am I am I'm glad to be part of this week long international workshop, which is which will be uh, discussing on different aspects of innovations and the role of IPR in in creating the innovation ecosystem for the uh, students, faculties grassroots innovators. Now, if you look at traditionally, the, the, the knowledge system, the knowledge was viewed in India as something that is created and put in the public domain. I believe all the faculty members present here will agree with me that the moment we have some invention, some discovery, we first think about to publish it in the journal. Now, many creators or inventors, even in recent past, were unaware of the benefits of IP rights or of their own capabilities to create IP assets. Or, or in, a, in a nutshell, you can say the value of their ideas. The economic benefits from the knowledge was not the norm in our country. 
not not in the in this part of the country not this region even it is realized in the western part of the country earlier economic benefits from knowledge was not the norm for us but the time has been changed now people were unaware of the value of others ipr and the need to respect the same not only create the ipr for your own but also you will have to respect the ipr of others the intellectual outcome of others that was not in our norm but if 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 you look into the constitution of india if i am allowed to quote from our constitution quote develop the scientific temper and spirit of inquiry and to strive towards the excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement unquote so there was a need to propagate the value of transforming the knowledge into ip assets the immediate economic rationale for the individuals and for the community as well as the pride in being the innovative should be conveyed effectively to the public a lot of young generation people are there on the board i could see the students not only to have the economic value from your from your innovative thoughts but also it will give you a status in the society being innovative which was the first uh, objective of implementing ipr in the developed countries in the 19th century now there are there are several essential ingredients or elements of innovation ecosystem i i am taking the taking the reference of the national education policy in the slide you can see the nep because the institutions like gorgao college tejpur university and all the higher academic institutions they are now bound to implement the national education policy in their respective institutes now the principal actors of this innovation ecosystem are government industry and academia in addition to fulfill their traditional functions they have also overlapping role at the interface industry is now joining hands with the academia academia joining hands to the government agencies government agencies are joining hands to the industry so lot of overlapping functionalities are there for the for the key players of the innovation ecosystem now one of the core features of the national education policy nep is it focus on research and innovation innovation is a new dimension added in this nep traditionally if you see from uh, nalanda university time in india the institutes like us are committed to comply on their role of teaching and education particularly in the sphere of the knowledge but now there is a new dimension added called innovation <coughs> the research and innovation plan of nep is evident in three ways if you look into it first 
is the establishment of the new institutional structure aiming to improve the pedagogy and assessment resulting in innovations in teaching and learning process. I'm sure this has been discussed in your college in length. So we have to be innovative in terms of teaching and learning. The second is the thrust on the NEP on priority and disruptive research areas. For example, for, for the Northeast India or for the state like Assam, we have been entrusted to find out the solution on the food technology, a food security. Now, to, to achieve the problems related to the food in our region, we need to take the help of the advanced technologies as has been suggested in the NEP, like robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, etc., etc. Third is the pedagogical measures like modular examinations to test the core capabilities, degree by research work, then streamlining the higher research degrees, more incubation facilities, technology development centers, deeper industry academia interface, interdisciplinary research, that can support the research ecosystem. It is expected that as a combined outcome of all these factors, the level of innovation and the numbers of intellectual property attempts will improve in our institutions. I'm very happy to know that Gorgao College has the IQAC, already established in the, in the college. But you have to take it to the next level where you will have to nurture the innovations and to ensure the protection of the latent innovations in your institution with the help of IPR. And then the IPR has to provide the benefit, whether it is economic benefit, the cultural benefit, the social benefit to the inventors and the creators in your institution and around. Now, having said all these things, we need to understand the barriers present in implementing the innovation ecosystem in the institutions. The, the successful implementation of the innovation initiatives, and we say in national education policy, needs to recognize the current barriers to innovation in our institutions. I would like to highlight some of them, not of course, not all, but I believe the, the institution like Orgao College will agree with my proposals. First, by default, education honors achievers, and this is, I mean, is therefore prone to discard the failures. Higher education institutes provide negligible space for experimentation, which reduces the possibility of for innovations. Not providing enough space for rejection, experimentation, and failure will block many potential innovations. 
I'd like to request to all of you to create the space for the failures, experimentations. Next, one of the major barrier is the pigeon holding of the initiatives of different bodies at the institution level. Unifying the research, innovation, and incubation initiatives at the institutional level is a leadership challenge. Next, if innovation is a priority for the university, for the colleges, for the research institutions, it needs a strategy that works on how to collect, prioritize, and allocate resources to different competing requirements of departments or research groups. Fourth, many innovations outside the mainstream academia go unacknowledged as most colleges, university keep high barriers of entry for the grassroots innovators. The entry barriers provide entry of the experiments or experimenters and innovators to the system. We should not, uh, I mean, stop the grassroots innovators to come inside our institutions. We need to break the wall. We should invite the grassroots innovators from nearby places of our institutions, from the society, to come inside our institute have the access to our unique facilities, explore the innovations in their mind. The fifth one, in most of the colleges and universities, low level of funding is one reason that makes the research more individualistic and centering it on career progression. Most of the times we are focused on the career progression, how much marks has to be achieved out of this research effort. And will it get contributed to my career progression? So these are the, these are the barriers in my understanding. Of course, the prime barriers for the innovation ecosystem. Now, India's ability to innovate is, is much higher than in the past because of the technological facility to share information and insights at the institution level we need to understand what kind of innovation direction can the institutions take. Locate the gaps where the capability can be built. If Tejpur University has the strength to contribute in the innovation ecosystem in the field of, say, food, say, in in, in chemical aspect, we need to identify them. We need to nurture them. We need to understand where are the gaps in the capacity building and what sort of IP structures and protections are aimed at. It will augment the shift from a centralized standardized monoculture understanding of innovation to a flexible, holistic, 
and diverse innovation domain. This is what is our ultimate goal. Now, I, 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 when, I, when I talk to different international and national forums, I get this question, how to transform the thoughts into the tangible assets. And I, I, I find there is a correlation in terms of the mapping. So let me try to uh, go in individual components. But before that, we'll have to understand the thoughts, the inventions should have the potential for sustained societal growth. Then only you can see it as the tangible assets. So what are the components? First, the continual research and innovations. It cannot be the outcome of you know, one fine day research or one fine morning research it has to be a continuous effort of research. So it has to be real time. It cannot be completely imaginary. And all the components of this research should be in dynamic synergy. Now, while achieving this thing, you have different stakeholders. First, your own organization, institution, which will provide you the ambience, compatible for the creation of the knowledge, well springs of knowledge crucibles of learning, crucible, you know, very common uh, uh, instrument in chemistry lab. So I tell that the educational institutes are the crucibles of the learning. Then the funding agencies, they are the nourishing sources. They should pour the support in proper crucibles so that the, the preliminary concept developed in the bench of the laboratories can get transformed into the technology. Then you have the collaborators, industry, entrepreneurs, MSMEs, NGOs, who will breach the gap between the research laboratory and the industry implications. This is also very significant. I have seen countries in the, uh, in the, in the West, the developed countries, it is a very normal practice there. The industry is coming forward joining hands with the research laboratories, taking the technology from there, nurturing it for commercialization. It is not so prominent in our country at this moment, but we have to join hands. We have to come forward. Then facilitators, there are some facilitators. Maybe say, if you, if you think about the innovation to a tangible assets, the IP experts can be the facilitators. They will facilitate your effort for the protection till the grant, and then how to make this granted technology available for the society. It's a long journey. The day of filing of your IP, 
through the examinations till the grant after the grant the the initiative for the technology transfer till the lifetime of the patents it's a long journey so one has to have the ethical and the legal protection on that aspect so we need the empowerment in this aspect this is one of the motive of this today's program how to empower the skill of the ip you know ip uh, system ip ecosystem so that tomorrow they can facilitate this process for themselves and also the peoples in the society now this is very interesting that you know we always talk about the knowledge in the crucible the in learning crucible the institutes and when you talk about the research this research is meant only at the institute level but i have introduced a new term here translational research so there are several components on the arrow you can see knowledge tools market oriented product and finally to the market the product in the market now this knowledge is basically the domain of the research in the laboratories and then with the input from the industry or from the society you need to transform this knowledge into a prototype but there is a gap i have shown the gap here again when you have developed the prototype you shared it with the industry partner then industry partner will give you the feedback on the already existing prototype in the same field and will throw the challenge to you how to improve upon the functionality of this prototype over the existing ones so it is the market oriented product or service once this has come then you will have to see the gap between this and the market market means you have the product in complete form and it will compete not only in terms of the functionality but also in terms of the cost of the product so there are also a scope for research in the gap and these kind of research in all these gaps are called the translational research addressing the gaps and these are not conducted isolated way in the research labs this has to be ideally conducted with the industry partners taking the feedback from the industries now intellectual property refers to the creations of the mind inventions literary and artistic works symbols names and images used in the commerce so intellectual property right are the rights like any other property rights you can imagine about your house your car your gold anything here in intellectual property allows the creators or the owners of patents trademarks copyright works to benefit from their own work or investment in a creation in the in the 19th century when the intellectual property rights were introduced 
in the developed countries like uh, you know us uk during that industrial revolution time the name was industrial property not intellectual property that time the name was industrial property now industrial property at that time includes patents for inventions trademarks industrial designs geographical indications on the other side the copyright covers the literary works novels poems plays films music artistic works architectural designs now the rights related to the copyright include those of performing artist in their performances producers phonographs in their recordings broadcasters in their radio and television programs now intellectual property rights reward the creativity and the human endeavor which fuel the progress of the human kind let me let me give one example in this regard the multi billion dollar film industry bollywood industry hollywood industry tollywood industry having having this recording publishing software which bring pleasure to millions of peoples worldwide would not exist without the copyright protection and brings huge huge amount of uh, you know economical benefit to the country this is possible because of the ip rights in particular the copyrights without the rewards provided by the patent system researchers and inventors would have little incentive to continue producing better and more efficient products for the consumers i am sure a lot of inventors are there on board today's program if these incentives would not have been there would you be motiv motivated for putting effort in inventions innovations ipr is providing this right look into the perspective of the consumers the consumers would have no means to confidently buy products or services without reliable international trademark protection and enforcement mechanisms to discourage the counterfeiting and the piracy when you go for buying the moga silk from guwahati market some of the peoples they are happy in getting the moga silk product in 5000 6000 8000 rupees but there are some peoples who look for the pure moga silk items and they are ready to pay the minimum minimum wage of the product 25000 30000 because they want the purity and the other aspect is that by 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 selling this product with the purity symbol on which tejpur university has worked many years and now you know like silk mark the moga weavers farmers they can put a symbol gi symbol of moga silk and tomorrow when you'll go to buy the moga products in the market you can ask the shop that you show me the symbol the gi symbol on your product and the motivation behind is that this this whatever be the amount of uh, of of the price of this moga product a part of it is going 
to our weavers, to our farmers, who puts significant effort to develop this product after many days effort. And what you are getting the, the, the mixed product of the Mukha silk in Guwahati market. This money is going to somebody else sitting in some other states. Who can give you this assurance on the product? The IP symbol, the GI symbol on the product, the IP protection on the product. Tejpur Lichi is protected by GI. So whatever it is going exported from Tejpur, a part of it is coming to the, the farmers of the Lichi of Tejpur. Well, I will not go to this extent because uh, my time is defined by the organizers. Otherwise I would have talked with you sharing my experience on all these aspects for hours and hours. Now, why IP protection is required? I was deliberating on this. First, the progress and well-being of the humanity rest on its capacity to create and invent new works in the areas of technology and culture. This is not only going to affect me as it is my invention. It will definitely affect the, the, the ecosystem in Tejpur University. In a greater perspective, it will affect the economical and societal benefit of the state of Assam. And maybe in a bigger perspective, our country India. Secondly, the legal protection of the new creation encourages the commitment of additional resources for further innovation. If you have one of your innovative concept protected by IP, you get motivated for the another societal problem to take up and find out the innovative solution. Third, the promotion and the protection of intellectual property sparks economic growth, creates new jobs, industries, and enhances the quality and enjoyment of life. Multi-billion dollar Bollywood film industry. Many of us, I know, even in this platform who are there, unethically you download the songs, the films, but do you know while doing such kind of thing, violating the IP rights, the copyright, actually the, the uh, royalty is not going to the original creator and the inventor. So an efficient and equitable intellectual property system can help all countries to realize the in intellectual property's potential as a catalyst for the economic development and societal and cultural well-being. The IP system helps to strike a balance between the interest of the innovators and the public interest for the benefit of all. Please try to understand it is not one-sided. It makes a balance between two sides. COVID-19 medicines, patented by the multinational companies, Pfizer. But when there was a national crisis in the country, fighting against the COVID-19 situation, we were in the urgent need of those medicines. So IP protection system, which was giving the monopoly to the multinational company, Pfizer, but it has a, it has a system also to, to you know, force the multinational company to provide the patent access by the country in their national urgency. 
for a limited period, which happened. Otherwise, how 120 crores, 120 crores peoples in our country could have got the vaccines, medicines, fighting against the COVID-19. So it creates a balance. It's not one-sided monopoly right. Everything is told, but also it creates a balance between the two. Other things I'm not talking in details, you know, job creations, the younger generations who are present in this uh, boat, you know, you have a different time than us. You cannot be only the job seekers now. You have to become the job providers. How? How can you? Even without the experience of any job, you can give job to the others. It, it is possible only by startup. Take the IP protection of your concepts and then develop the uh, SMEs, industries, and then you can provide with these IP rights, jobs to many other peoples. So I was talking about this thing, stronger economy, I have told, because when you have the IP protection on something, the royalty out of it comes to the society, to the institution. Also, I have talked in details to identify my favorite products. I do not want this mixed silk muga uh, thing to buy, even it is one third, one fourth, one fifth in price. I want the real pure product. Even if I have to pay four times or five times of the amount. Authors and artists, they should be rewarded for their original creations. So I'm not going to, you know, tell again and again these things, but what I want to, you know, uh, show you that in the Northeast India, we have significant number of entrepreneurs, particularly the women entrepreneurs. But are they aware of the, you know, appropriate IP protection on their endeavors? Are they using optimally? Are they optimally using the tools of IPR for management of their business? See some examples I have picked up. Rita Tage, Arunachal Pradesh launched the organic kiwi wine. And it is now, it is now one of the, uh, you know, prominent product of its kind in the country. Very recently, I have, uh, you know, recommended this thing to the ministry for one international exhibition in Delhi. There are many other examples cited here what we need to do as the as the as the uh, you know I, uh, innovative products in their endeavor needs to be protected through the ip machines to have better ownership and ensure the ownership for a longer period of time. Of course, there are different domains in this aspect, which probably the time limit will not allow me to discuss. Like, it's like you come to a juncture of the road and you have so many options of the road and which one you'll go and adopt. Patents, design registration, copyright, geographical indication, trademark, trade secret. You may not have to adopt always the patents. You can make it as a trade secret. If Coca-Cola company invented their, their uh, you know, recipe in 1886 and still maintained it for their business, 
it could not have been done by patent because the lifetime of the patent is 20 years after 20 years you are your inventions will be made public so what is the option then if i have to take it up for my business for 200 years then you opt for the trade secret so there are different domains which can be you know adopted for ensuring the rights on your invention and to have the benefit from this innovative effort now these are these are uh, you know i'm not going to the details of all these things uh, my my uh, uh, colleagues in in this uh, workshop uh, will be speaking on these aspects in details i know momita is there and uh, many others are there devasis is there many many others are there uh, i'm sure they will be talking in this detail so i do not want to repeat the things but every what i want to mention in one line every ip protection has their lifetime and till the lifetime you will have to renew this thing time to time if you do not uh, or if you fail to renew uh, the right then it will become public it will go to the public domain now there are many examples of the inventions i mean i can keep on telling on these things but one example i would like to uh, mention always is that it is shown over the finger indelible ink this is probably the most successful technology transfer in the country india this was developed by a company almost like 60 years before and through nrdc this technology was transferred to election commission of india and now when you go for the election you just imagine 130 crore people country every election happens when you go for it you need to put this indelible ink on your finger so it's a, it's a huge adaptation of this technology in this big democratic country that's why it is called it is the most successful technology transfer now you must be thinking that one technology can be protected by only one ip tool which is not correct you can you can have the protection by multiple things so one example i i call it ring fence so if you if you take the example of coca cola bottle the first thing you do you know you open the bottle through the ring pull this is patented then you have the coca cola written in a cursive way which is a trademark of coca cola the moment you see you understand this is coca cola the bottles the design of the bottles is protected by the design registration no one in this world can copy this design then the image you see in the red color background coca cola bottle some water bubbles over that coca cola written it is copyrighted the formula i was telling the recipe of this coca cola is protected under trade secret so one particular invention can also be protected by several ip tools now from this discussion and even when i go to different institutes uh, across the country i hear that this is the new concept this has come into the practice very recently but let me tell you that patent like incentives appeared in ancient greeks in 500 before christ long long ago of course the name ip was not there but similar kind of protection and continued to spread throughout europe 
through the 18th century. Early patent systems reinforced the wealth of the elites instead of the welfare and the production capacity of the whole of the society. Say, say British patent application fees at that time, for example, were more than 11 times the per capita income of the average citizen. So it was already out of the capacity of the general people. This restricted innovation to a small sector of the population that time. As the first country in the world to incorporate the intellectual property rights in its national constitution, United States of America founders viewed the intellectual property rights as the vital to the nation's economic survival. And they consciously designed our patent system for this purpose. The importance of intellectual property was first recognized formally in the Paris Convention for the protection of industrial property. I already mentioned to you, the name was industrial property in 1883. And the Bonn Convention for the protection of literary and artistic works was in 1886. Paris Convention ensured the protection of the trademark, patents, unfair competition, etc. Now, WIPO Copyright Treaty was on digital agenda, technological measures, such as circumvention of technological measures, and TRIPS agreement was, was, was introduced in the intellectual property law into the multilateral trading. Before trips, it was on one-to-one -one trading basis, which was for the first time trips agreement. And trips has a powerful enforcement in mechanism among WTO members. In 2003, the agreement was loosened for the domestic market requirement and allows the developing countries to export other countries. That's why, you know, during the COVID-19 time, we could take the benefit out of this TRIPS agreement. Well, I'm sorry. Ah, it has come. Now, you know, uh, I would like to take the example of United States of America. Sorry. Why it is going like this? I'm sorry, the slides are. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. There was some problem, technical problem. Uh, I, 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 I would like to take the uh, example of United States of America uh, uh, in, in uh, explaining the impact of intellectual property rights. The US patent system stimulated the invention and the economic growth and quickly became the unraveled leader of the industrial revolution. 1870, the US was patenting more than five times the number of innovations as Britain, even though their, their, their populations were nearly equal in size. 
In 1880, there was a major surge in patenting with annual number of new patents, 20,000. This patent boom correspond to rapid advances in railroad, telegraph, telephone, electric light, power industry, etc. Now double the number of patents granted by 19th century or 20th century due to automobile and the aircraft industry. Patent level increased to one lakh per year due to the growth of the personal computer and electronic industry by 1980. In 2004, threefold enhancement in the number of granted patent is observed due to smartphone, high-tech electronics, nanotechnology boom. Now, IP companies and uh, is, is having an astonishing 38% of the total US GDP today. Can you imagine 38% of the US GDP is occupied by the IP companies? I mean, IP of the companies represents 80% of the market value of all publicly traded companies in the US. 80% of the market value. This is really significant and this has made the country USA as the major power in the world. Now you must be thinking, I am talking about the US model. What is about my own country, India? If you look into the, into the ranking, Global Innovation Index ranking of India, recent time, it has improved to 46 from the earlier, 10 years before, say like uh, from the ranking of 81. This is a significant improvement. In the IP index, Global IP index, we are in the position of 43. But a long way to go. In terms of our publications, we are third in the world. In terms of population, we are second in the world. But in terms of the IP, we have to go a still a long way. The number of patents has been increased after the implementation of the national IP policy. But the input to output ratio, that means number of filing and the number of patents going for the technology transfer, this has still a reasonable gap. And we need to bridge this gap to come up as the major power in the world. Now, I will uh, take one example to, to uh, re-insist on the fact of the IP impact on the academic institutes like Gorgao College, like Tejpur University. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, USA, is, is one of the finest institution ranking very high in the global ranking system for consistent years. If you look into their IP profile, of 2019. I have taken the example of 2019 because 2020, 21, we are having this pandemic time. Figures were not very significant. But 2019, they received 789 invention disclosures, 439 filed US patents, 383 patents issued, 25 companies formed, and the income of 2019 by Massachusetts Institute of Technology through the IP protection was $34.8 million, which is the licensing revenue. Please note here that MIT is a private university. They are not funded and supported by the government funding agencies like us they have to generate their own revenue. And this is how they are generating their revenue. This is very encouraging for us because 
the days are coming when the academic institutes like us will be told to earn their own revenue the days are not very far and what will be the way in such condition is to ensure the revenue earning through the ip protection i will go a little bit quick now this my time is coming to end so national ip policy uh with keeping all these things in mind indian government decided to come up with national ip policy which was implemented in 2016 and it was set to establish an ecosystem in the country conducive to innovation and creativity not only in terms of the ip awareness and creation but also commercialization and enforcement and india's range of intellectual creations i always tell this thing india's range of intellectual creations is as diverse as its people from patent to plant varieties trademarks to traditional knowledge copyright to designs and geographical indications now this national ip policy seeks to instill the importance of ipr in every sector and also seeks to modify the existing literature law to overcome the issues faced by the stakeholders it will wave in the in the in the strengths of the government research and development organization educational institutes corporates msmes and other stakeholders in the creation of an innovation conducive environment following the uh, implications of the national ip policy in 2016 tejpur university being one of the uh, you know maiden academic institute in the country implemented its own ip policy joining the league of very few institutes at present in the country having its own ip policy so uh, you know i am not going to detail about it because my time has got uh, you know uh, finished uh, in some other occasion i will try to highlight this innovation policy of tejpur university and intellectual property policy of the university implemented and this this is now the need for colleges autonomous colleges universities institutes to to have their own intellectual property policy in their institute and an an innovation ecosystem to develop in the institute for the benefit of the faculties researchers students grassroots innovators uh, uh you know in and around of your institute and uh, tejpur university in its advisory capacity helping uh, all the universities in the northeast region nehu dibrugarh university uh, you know uh, all this uh, private universities usdm and all uh, to set up their own uh, ipr cell ip policy innovation policy innovation ecosystem uh, i will i will uh, i will finish my talk here uh, this is this is just one glimpse to show you if you have any interest uh, to to take up your application for any of the ip domain uh, these are the places but what i want to mention nowadays everything has become online so it is not like the earlier times you will have to reach physically to these offices uh, and submit the documents in hard copy nowadays everything can be done online and uh, overall this whole affair in our country is is uh, uh, guided by the ministry of commerce and industry department of promotion and of industry and internal trade who is also uh, you know sponsoring uh, my chair in tejpur university 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई हैव फिनिश्ड माय डेलीवरेशन थैंक यू सर थैंक यू thank you for your interesting and informative presentation it was indeed a pleasure listening to you today i would like to take over to the question and answer sessions we have a few question from the participants mm. uh, there is a question sir it states as do you think that free access to information sources poses a threat to the intellectual property rights of researchers themselves yeah i mean this is being uh, discussed uh, recently uh, i understand the topic uh, hinted in this aspect a lot of uh, you know uh, deliberations uh, argument counter argument is going on because uh, ip rights are territorial and it has its own characteristics in uh, different states i mean different countries in the world so um, you know my my uh, uh, say in this regard will be that uh, the ip rights to be ensured on on all these aspects living apart this you know access to the research publications uh, in all these aspects in the first place the ip rights protection to be ensured and then uh through the uh, through the implications of the trips agreement and similar kind of uh, policies in the world intellectual property forum probably uh, this kind of uh, flexibility uh, should be provided to uh, to few of the countries in the world uh, you know as per the need for a limited period of time so uh, if if this will come within the legal boundary with the uh, with the policy with a uh, in the line of the policy of the world intellectual property forum i do not think any problem in this aspect but uh, as i was telling uh, i'm trying to convey through my lecture that illegal uh, accessing of the ip protected uh, entities uh, items should be stopped at any cost uh, because uh, keeping in mind the interest of the original creators or the mm, inventors yeah that's all mm. so there another one asked sir some innovative ideas are limited at some areas and that models only work on that place if we inspire from that idea and innovate and modify a little bit and present it in our locality especially in assam is it wrong or right can we get a copyright claim can we get a patent i asked this question because some international models are performed in our state which are invented many years ago see this is the thing uh, uh, i mean there is a thumb rule i'm saying in the ip domain that whenever you will have any innovative idea the first thing you should do is to file for the ip protection of it without any delay because unlike the paper publication the patentability of the invention is just in a global search there is no assam there is no north east there is no india in this search it will be in a global search and the person who has uh, become the first person to protect the idea the concept or the invention will have the ownership right and it is a kind of monopoly right to stop others using the same invention same uh, you know concept uh, for 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 any any sort of application purpose 
so i i would like to say you that if you have any and at the same time what i told in my lecture you also have to respect other iprs knowingly or unknowingly you should not infringe or violate the ip uh, you know ip protection of others invention so it, there is nothing local again i am telling so you have to identify the potential of your invention and at the first place you should go for the filing of the protection and then you can disclose it and the other part of this question was that uh, you know whether a mere development on the existing technology can be considered for the protection no in the in the patent protection there are three thumb rules one is novelty second is non obviousness and the third one is industrial application so the the invention must be absolutely novel and it cannot be also have an obviousness from the existing technology so if you have the invention fulfilling all these three criteria then only you can go for the application of the invention and as i was telling you maybe it was little bit uh, difficult in the earlier period of time now it has become very simple you have to file the application online you know there is no hard copy submission there is no physical appearance in the indian patent office everything is now online and the filing fees which was also uh, you know raised during my deliberation earlier times the filing fees were very high many a times it is out of the reach of the uh, you know uh, students researchers but now for the academic institutions this filing fee has been reduced 1/8 one eighth of the earlier filing fees so it has now come well within the reach of the uh, you know common people so if you can timely identify the potential the patentability of your invention even it is not fully developed you can go for provisional application and after 12 months of the provisional application you can go for the complete specification filing yes sir uh, one more i will ask can i get an intellectual property right just from the result of a research yeah i mean you know as the natural human endeavor every one of us not only the you know the professors in university or the researchers in the uh, university they are uh, involved into the discovery and the inventions but all of us if you see even the grassroots innovators you know they are also thinking always how to provide some innovative solution to the existing problems so i mean uh, if we are doing and if we uh, if we are doing the innovative uh, you know uh, uh, technology and if we can ensure the patentability of it through the patent search or through other ip searches then uh, i mean we can always go for the even actually it is suggested that you, you should always go for the ip protection the patent protection at the first place and then you disclose it in the public or you know uh, disclose it uh, uh, in publications because once you will disclose it in the public then it will not be considered for the ip protection but the moment you will have the ip protection in the next minute you can go for its publications or disclosing it in any form in conference in news media or anything but once it is disclosed it cannot be considered for ip protection yes okay sir thank you uh we have uh, for the participants we have already shared the link for the feedback form and i would like to request them to kindly respond to the form uh we have almost come to the end of the first session of this week long online international workshop 
I, on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Pitram Dev Sir for giving us his valuable time and for educating us with the knowledge on intellectual property right and how to protect our creations with a strategy. It was indeed very informative and pleasure listening to you, sir. We have learned so many new things that IPR can cover. After this session, we got to know how IP can protect literally, IP can literally cover everything from a production procedure to product launch schemes from brand names and logo to products. The confusion of how to protect ideas and innovations is widespread. And from this session, we got the idea how we can proceed with it. Uh, also, uh, we got to learn how we can protect the value of our ideas and we can benefit from them economically and the need to respect the ideas of others. Thank you again, sir. And now I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Saibbasasi Mohanra sir, Principal Gorgao College, for giving us the opportunity to organize the workshop. DPIIT, IPR Share, Tezpur University, and IPEZ, the City Law School, University of London, for collaborating with us. Last but not the least, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the faculty members and participants for staying connected with us and for their active participation. Looking forward to some more inspiring and informative interactions in the next session. Uh, and uh, the next session will begin from 1 p.m. We will meet again after a short break and we'll resume the session. I would like to request everyone to remain online. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to have your attention. We will resume after 10 minutes, uh, five minutes we will resume again for the next session.
good afternoon everyone so we'll be starting the next session from uh, 1 pm i would request all the participants to join us back by 1 pm thank you Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, am I allowed to speak now or should I start at 1 p.m.? Ma'am, I think uh, you can start at 1. Those oh. participants will join then by 1. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Am I audible? Yes, yes. madam, you are audible. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon and the warm greetings to everyone present here. Respected speaker of today's session, Ms. Momita Gorai Mem, faculty members and participants, and my dear students. I, on behalf of the Gorgan College family, welcome you all to the second session of the week-long online international workshop on intellectual property rights for the promotion and protection of innovations. Organized by IQAC Gorgan College in collaboration with DPIIT IPR Chair Tejpur University and IPEG, the City Law School, City University of London. Today, for the second session, we have with us Ms. Momita Gorai Mem here with us today. And uh, she will be delivering her session on intellectual property rights and develop in the developing countries. So before I hand over the session to Mem, I would like to briefly introduce Mem to our participants. Mem currently works as the assistant manager, SIPAM, Government of India. Prior to this, she has worked as Innovation Associate in National Innovation Foundation, SAI, Fit India Division. She also worked in novelty analysis and prior art search for traditional knowledge. We welcome you, Mem, to this session. And uh, before, without much ado, I would like to hand over the session to Mem to continue her session. And uh, I would request the participants to stay connected with us for the session. Thank you. Thank you, Ankita, madam. So am I audible to all? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay. So now, uh, without much delay, let's start with our session. So our session is Intellectual Property Right and Developing Countries. So uh, before we start with the developing countries, what happened in the past that some countries are developing, some are developed and some are underdeveloped. Uh, some instances happen in past, some industrial revolution, some renaissance and some kind of uh, development, colonism, all this happened in past. Due to this, the such changes happened in the world. So if we look in the prehistoric era, uh, if we look once at a glance, where the civilization started. So you all know about Egypt, Mesopotamia, Iran, and up to Pakistan, Sindh, Baluchistan, Gujarat, parts of India, uh, Punjab, where Indus Valley civilization started. Uh, Russia, China, Australia, Alaska, Alaska. So all these places. So what happened here? Here innovation started. And during the prehistory, what is innovation? It is the need of the hour. If there is some kind of social problem, we are wanting to solve that problem. So such is called innovation. Uh, I would request uh, the host that uh, those who are in waiting room, please accept them and, and uh, make an entry to them to the session. So now, uh, when you look at the so IP, know your intellectual property rights. And we have to be inspired to innovate and protect our IP right in the current scenario. But if you look at the past, some of the oldest innovation, this is a pot in Indus Valley civilization, which was uh, invented, which was invented in 9000 BC. That is the before Christ era. So this pot make earlier life very uh, easy. They can store water, they can cook, and uh, they can store valuable precious items in pot. So this was a very uh, important innovation in past. So similarly, this is a mirror, which was found in Turkey, in Meso and in Meso Americas. It was made out of volcanic glass, obsidian. So this is also innovation of the past. This is a steam engine of a very uh, initial 80s. So it was a, uh, a steam engines uh, invented by Heron of Alexandria in the first AD. And this is a navigation device, which is used by sellers some 2000 years back in China, in areas of uh, this uh, East Asia. So this is a past innovation. Now let's look at the oldest era to the current era. So technology advanced across time. The oldest, when technology started, it was stone, tool, fire, bow, will. So it was also an innovation. 
but they were not recognized as innovation it was the need it was the problem which was arising in the society and this problem was being solved with some mechanical devices some form of expression so next innovation was writing this is the form of expression right copywriting next was water mill then gunpowder then a printing press this is a very famous innovation which got power of expression from the printing space which was on 1045 ad after that optical lens then steam engine came then telegraph plastic aeroplane transistor fusion power space light internet mobile technology here we are in the current scenario so you have to understand the innovation started from prehistoric era and we are taking up to this kind of level so uh, need for ipr in the world so tools secured uh, acquired a new economic value because the tools are making our life easier they are making life uh, much comfortable to live with so to this and this tool started to be duplicated and to be sold in the uh, sold as per the need and distributed so with this the need for the innovation protecting the innovation came so that the innovator may get a compensated compensation or remuneration for his hard work so the earliest patent laws were an expression of the need to ensure that innovation did not die away with the original inventor rather it should be known to everyone should be disclosed and disseminated throughout the world for example the aeroplane uh, printing press so however the system of both laws and practices which emerged were based on physical expression and thus what was protected as intellectual property right was an expression of idea so technological artifact piece of music and work of literature so where from this protection came into being during the renaissance era in vienna that is venetian they uh, hesitated to display their uh, innovation their articles in an fair in a trade fair so the king inquired what happened why you people are doing like this so they told no no our innovation will be copied so we won't be able to display and it will be sold and we won't get a benefit of this so during that time king realized that uh, we have to pro provide some monopolies to these traders so that they can trade their invention innovation throughout the uh, country throughout the continent and earn some profit out of it and their hard work must be rewarded so that was the purpose of protecting innovation so as we all know english were the uh, highest authorities at that time so english statutes of monopolies of 1624 was the first recognition which gave from the government of england and after that english statute of any of 1710 on copyright law were given during that time theater movies uh, cinema shows were of very uh, famous so it providing protection to this artist to this uh, the expression to their expression this uh, statute of any of 1710 came into being then the modern law started from us patent act of 1836 so first modern patent act came into the cognition during that time so international level 1880s formation of the union in europe for the protection of industrial property and literary artistic work so most development have been taking place from the 1960s onward so the industrial revolution and capitalist mode of production led to the necessity of redefining property so what is the necessity of redefining property the industrial revolution and the capitalist mode of production because because of industrial revolution and capitalist mode of production there has been a vast there is a, a vast arena of products a variety of products and capitalist means the the industries the trader were dominating so they wanted some forms of production some forms of protection so that their uh, innovations their ideas they were not stolen they are not copied by some other person so if we now le let's look into some of the oldest form of uh, innovation and then gradually will come into the modern time so some of the oldest form of innovation if you look at the adding machine by blaise pascal all are aware of this after seeing the problem it his father was a tax collector he is his father that you have to spend long hour calculating the income the tax to be received the tax to be uh, uh, 
so i would request everyone that uh, okay uh, those who, who have not joined please let everyone to join notification is coming and uh, we can chat after uh, i complete my session so uh, i uh, won't be able to focus on uh, reading the chats so some of the famous uh, innovations older innovations the blaze pascal's machine adding machine so he invented all all before reading the computer syllabus we always read this adding machine this is a calculating device so after him if we take another famous example stop motion device for textile loom in 1850 at the age of 12 margaret mee witnessed a serious accident at a textile mill and concerned for the safety of mill worker she invented a stop motion device to quickly stop the power textile loom in case something went wrong so her invention was put to use at many mills where it increased the safety of mill workers so after that her life long times was granted 25 patents and her patents are still used in the current era so a uh, most valuable invention telephone uh, the mobile phone which you are having you can't uh, think of spending a day without that mobile phone the initiation came from this alexander graham bell in february 14 1876 he was the person who invented the telephone and submitted for the patent application and after him another person eliza gray came so he was just only a few hour before after after few hour of him eliza gray submitted the innovation so maybe he had delayed the submission of patent today the inventor for the mobile phone would be eliza gray so we would be knowing so instead of alexander graham bell so another thomas edison the light bulbs uh, he was granted he did thousands of experiment uh, for this light bulb including a uh, cathode anode then vacuum so he has studied on two patents uh, on the two canadian friends henry wood woodward and matthew evans they sold their patent for incandescent light bulb to thomas edison he further experimented over this and he invented the incandescent light bulb uh, using a lower current a smaller carbonized fiber a better vacuum inside the bulb so in 1890 1879 edison showed his incandescent lamp to the world so improving the past innovation so it started from 1980 floppy disks if we look the information sector it started with floppy disks the 1990s cd rom dvd then 2000 memory sticks and now what's next is going to be come so if you look at the definition of property so till now we have understood the property is not a tangible form it is some intangible form which i know so it is the intellectual property in all the product of human mind human creative and skill so ip is a property which cannot be touched or seen so is this only property there is another form of property which come from the intellect which is the intellectual property inventions so inventions books painting songs symbols name images designs used in business so this all are intellectual property right we can see in the screen so legal right conferred on such intellectual property are called intellectual property right so like any legal like any real property it can be bought sold licensed exchanged given away and the owner can prevent unauthorized use encourage the idea by securing them pave the way to earn money for your idea add to their skill enhancing career opportunity to become an ip professional for academician provide recognition and play a major role in academic performance indicator so if we think about ip we have to think learn our train our brain to be creative mind so ips are territorial in nature for anything which is protected in domestic may not have a protection in global scenario so uh, anything and uh, at the same time a person can innovate something in india and africa as well so the for protection of your ip in any country one has to seek protection separately under relevant law so earlier the conventional paris filing was there now pct form is there 
so there are a special mechanism in place in various territories for providing protection to different types of ipr so intellectual property rights which provide a basis for return on investment in research and development so ip is a strong tool for commercialization opportunities for getting funding from dbt dst or other funding agency ipr strategy development high research output institutional ranking ip portfolio so ip regime in international arena what was the need the extension of protectable subject matter elimination reduction so far reaching potential economic and social implication of ipr the public interest in ipr worldwide has reached unprecedented level level and views on ipr effects differ quite radically so the need of ipr has reached an unprecedented level an ipr and competitiveness if we look the competitiveness the, in, the commercial importance of ipr has grown considerably especially in the 1970s the first patent act came in india 1970s so the pressure on business national economies to be competitive and inter alia through innovation creativity new product new services differentiation creativity between products so technical knowledge artistic creativity reputation distinctiveness add market value to good and services ipr help to maximize the opportunities for private appropriation while minimizing the risks of free riding so ipr and trade so what is the uh, the protection in a given country of a country's r and d for example if a product of a company is not protected in a different territory it would not export to that territory so the protection in a given country of a company's r and d investment through ipr may induce that country to export it high technology product to that country suppose a pharmaceutical product is produced in china it will not export to india unless it is having a patent protection in india as well so ipr holder may block import if those infringe upon their domestic exclusive right for example uh, in india we are having a domestic exclusive right on some products and some export is infringing a domestic product so we have to block those products from importing ipr and investments so in countries where high intensity r and d sector are important for example pharmaceutical chemical software aerospace ipr policy will provide incentive to research and development and foreign direct investment and in a country where low intensity r and d sectors are dominant agriculture textile electronic assembly ipr may have limited effect on innovation and foreign direct investment so foreign direct investment comes uh, investment from foreign come to india or come to a country in the sectors of high throughput value for example aerospace uh, technology pharmaceutical chemical softwares but uh, being a developing nation our agrarian nation we have to be uh, more self dependent and we have to be more innovative so uh, since in the current scenario we are doing good but uh, the global strategy is this so there is a uh, while reducing diffusion and increasing the cost of foreign technology that's why you can see iphone is so much costly in india because uh, the production doesn't happen in india so that's what it is saying that ipr may have limited effect on innovation and fdi foreign direct investment so developing country strategy so at a certain stage of development weak level of ipr protection are more likely to stimulate economic development and poverty elevation than strong level so what is the meaning of this if we look at uh, m pass advanced patent searching in the indian scenario we can search the domestic patent over there and we can read each and every document and we can do the same experiment as written in the complete specification provisional specification for and if somebody question us we can say we are for the study purpose for experimental purpose for learning purpose we are doing the experiment we can do that experiment up to pilot scale also for example say i'm putting a bio reactor of 10 to 20 liters that can be done but the we will be stopped as we if we infringe the product at commercial level for a studying purpose i may 
do the experiment and make my student to learn the, those techniques but i cannot make the product and sell the market sell in the market so that is the thing so it is meaning that ip uh, there are leverages in developing economies but in developed nation there is more stringent norms more stringent legalities so ipr protection become important only when countries reach a certain degree of technological capacity and income level so here one size uh, fit approach doesn't uh, suits to everyone so uh, numerous countries have at times exempted certain sectors of industry for from patent protection and or other included safeguards for example uh, some medicine for example having uh, uh, lots of uh, need in public okay so they are exempted from they are given compulsory licensing and lots of companies are producing it so uh, it's an example i'm giving so in 1883 paris convention uh, for the protection of industrial property in 1886 bern convention came which uh, <coughs> so during that time our ipr scenario in international started so in 1890 70s also countries in east asia follows a weak form of ip protection to facilitate technological learning and promote their own industrial policy objective <laughs> so developing country strategy so to finding a right balance between the interest of creators users and public is difficult and it is particularly difficult for countries where some industries may benefit from high level of protection and others may not so different views within countries and among groups of countries balancing the interest is not a purely economic calculation it is an inherently political exercise which has important social implications so the emergence of trips and main and its main feature trips means trade related aspects of intellectual property right so it is started from it is uh, wto so uh, it established a minimum standards for all types of iprs as based on and supplement with additional obligations of paris bond rome washington convention and it extends to ipr principle governing international trade mfn so it contains provisions relating to enforcement of ipr amendment reservation so trips provision let's look at <coughs> some of the <coughs> trips provision so article 27.1 patent shall be available and patent right enjoyable without discrimination as to the field of technology article 7 the, the protection and enforcement of ipr should contribute to the promotion of uh, technological innovation and to the mutual advantage of producers and users of technology users of technological knowledge in a manner conducive to social economic welfare and to balance the right and obligations that means promotion of technological innovation that means the promotions uh, in uh, promotions of knowledge promotions of innovation and the commitment to ensure that the benefit of publicly funded research is available to all to ensure open access to scientific databases to ensure access to vital technology and having maximum social penetration of the technology we are providing the technology not for some commercial benefit but for social benefit for social development upliftment so article 8 says members may adopt measures necessary to protect public health and nutrition and to promote public interest in sectors of vital importance to their socio economic and technological development that means we have to adopt measures for let's look at the covid 19 scenario so there was lots of leverages in the trips arena and uh, covid uh, vaccines uh, medications uh, ppe kits everything so that is the meaning that is that we have to adopt necessary measures to protect public health nutrition to promote the public interest in the sectors of vital importance and to their socio economic technological development so members may be needed to prevent the abuse of ipr by right holder or to resort practices unreasonably restrain the trade and adversely affect the trade 
so in case of conflicts between promoting the public interest and preventing abuses adhering to the in agreement trips indicate that later should prevail so doha declarations on trips and health so it is it is told that each provisions of trips should be read in the light of the object purpose of the agreement as expressed for example trips does not and should not prevent members from taking measures to protect public health so trips should be trips can and should be interpreted and implemented in a manner supportive of wto members right to protect public health and promote access to medicine for all so uh, we can see the example of covid 19 scenario we have made certain regime so that covid 19 vaccine is available to the whole world every person in the plan in this world uh, all the countries must get the covid vaccines so trips uh, the variant may be a uh, different but we are doing further so for example and now let's look at some of other articles so article 7 and 8 inform and influence every other provisions of trip the declaration providing guidance to panelists and the trips interpreted declaration providing guidance to government as how the trip should be implemented uh, members have the right to protect public health and right cannot be prejudiced by the uh, member so the flexibility is in the trips agreement so implementation reviews of national legislation in the light of the flexibility is allowed by the trips and doha declaration on trips and health so uh, here the compulsory license is talked about that is a single a single company will not have a monopoly of a product so to keep the freedom to determine the ground upon which such licenses are guaranteed are granted for example an important medicine important vaccine important uh, pharmaceutical ingredient so if they are given compulsory license or some leverages so that all the companies uh, can produce and distribute at the right so provision relating to disclosure of origin pic's benefit sharing the pic's prior informed consent so provisions relating to early working ex exceptions and to allow freedom to protect pharmaceutical test data through exclusive non exclusive right regime to determine the novelty and innovative steps requirement so uh, parallel import so parallel import means some product which is having a foreign patent but not in the uh, domestic country which is importing the product so it parallel import to keep freedom regarding exclusion of plant animal from patentability protecting plant varieties by a sui generis legislation system plant varieties doesn't get a patent protection ppfra provision is there for plant varieties to make use of gi to avoid domestic products to become generic to develop national competition laws interpretative guidelines doha declaration and trips and health so uh, innovative policy making and drafting so trips establishing inter agency government inter agency governmental committee and involving private sector civil society undertaking interdisciplinary study on the implications of ipr on different sectors and activities training government academic ngo professional in ipr policy making and drafting putting emphasis on tra traditional and aimed at policy formulations so this are now let us look at inadequate ipr awareness if there is such so we can look that india is filing 50000 uh, patents and in uh, in the usa china is filing 3 lakhs patent every year usa is filing 6 to 7 lakhs patents every year so we can see the power of patenting where these developed countries have reached because they are having monopolies on the technology and of course we need lot of awareness because if now let's look at uh, assam assam is very rich of gi but only hardly 14 to 15 gis are known from assam we are having lots of varieties of uh, agricultural produce lots of handicraft lots of party sticks and manufacture product on assam but still very known and no very lesser known because protection has not been granted because awareness is not there people does not know how to file the uh, gi a common artisan or a common producer or common farmer will know will not know the power of his right power of his uh, uh, knowledge or the gi which he can get so this is the thing 
so of course uh, now lots of awareness has to be taken up so if you now let's look indian ipr law and history so where does it start it started from 1856 where british patent law of 1852 certain exclusive privileges were guaranteed to inventors of new manufacturers for a period of 14 years in 1859 patent monopolies called exclusive privileges when for making selling and using invention in india and authorizing others to do for 14 years from the date of filing was given so 1872 to 1883 patents and design protection act came 1883 to 88 protection of invention act 1888 to 1911 consolidation as the invention and design act 1911 to 1999 the indian patent and design act the indian patent act 1970 came so 1999 the patent amendment act came in 2002 to 2005 the patent amendment 2 came uh, patent amendment act 2002 came into force the 2005 patent amendment uh, act 2005 wherein process patent was included now we are talking about ipr so what are the types of ipr uh, there are eight types of ipr copyright trademark geographical indication design patents trade secret planned varieties semiconductor design if we see what is patent uh, before me professor pritam dev has explained a lot i was listening to his explanation so uh, i think that all are very much pretty much aware of this still let's uh, look at uh, for an invention to be patentable it must be new non obvious to a person who is already skilled in the relevant field of technology and must be capable of industrial application means the product must be capable for industrial application and the patent is valid for a period of 20 years and post Uh, starting from the date of filing of the patent application and after that the patent is in public domain and can be used by any interested person to learn to innovate and to uh, uh, improve upon the existing patent so if we look at non patentable invention in india it is a method of treatment of human and animal invention that cause serious is prejudiced to human animal plant life or health computer program per se algorithm mere discovery of a new form of a known substance mere add mixture resulting in aggregation of properties mental act or method of playing game presentation of abstract idea invention containing traditional knowledge inventions contrary to natural laws mathematical or business method method of agriculture invention which fall under atomic energy act so some of the patented inventions we know this is election ink it was uh, invented by csir it is the first patented csir uh, first product patent which csir has applied for this is a seeding device idli making device this is a cloth clipping device uh, cloth clipping clipper so all these are patented device some of the example of innovation by youth because since it is for academia i would like to highlight that youths at a very small age they can also have the power of doing innovation this is a class 7 uh, candidate he he is given ignite award and i would uh, request everyone they can search ignite award in google and they can know about that scheme of dst so hereby this uh, Tanmay Kumar Sethi has invented a dust bin, which is a killing, which can kill the insect, so that there would not be spread of diseases. So here is a joint uh, invention by a uh, uh, innovations by youth. So that is a modified broom with dust collector while collecting, cleaning the wall ceiling. So this is a shoe with uh, sweat absorbing material. so that there won't be bad smell odor during summer so if we now let now let's go to copyright so what is copyright copyright uh, is uh, you know is an expression of idea to rep and the copyright owner has the uh, copyright if you look what is the copyright the literary including the software the books you can see dramatic sound recording artistic musical cinematographic work so these all are copyright so they if we say about copyright is an expression of idea and the owner has the right to reproduce to translate adapt perform 
distribute and publicly display the work so anybody who wants an access to the work has to pay royalty to the owners so these are the books of harry potter so trademarks let's look very quickly trademarks the name itself trade and mark so the marks which are needed for doing some trade so you can see this pizza hut detol macd uh, this is the trademark so the symbol of origin and source of mark which bear stamp of quality the trademark owner always want to protect his mark for unfair from unfair use and also from fraud and deceit so functions of trademark are source identify the origin of the product service identify identification then ident uh, distinguish product service or proprietor from those of other quality to guarantee its unchanged quality advertising to advertise the product services essential of trademark that must be a unique distinctive non dictionary word invented word custom uh, custom designs device or symbols non descriptive good non descriptive goods so uh, we have to avoid common shapes adjective name of a person religious or constitutional symbols it is see so how do you indicate your trademark the trademark uh, this tm has been used and r symbol is used for registered mark now let's come to semiconductor so semiconductor the definition in itself uh, give us an idea it is a semiconductor so a product having transistor and other circuitry element and an electrical and designated to perform an electronic circuitry functions so layout design uh, is a layout of transistor and other circuitry element including led wire connected in a semiconductor integrated circuit so it is protected under semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act 2000 which deal with layout design so the uh, protection is given for original distinctive distinguishing and not having commercially exploited anywhere in india or elsewhere beforehand so design design mean design is for aesthetic value it is not a functional aspect can you see the design on the surface of this machine can you see the design over here so design is a eye catching feature is a shape pattern arrangement of line color combination and orna which is ornamental in nature and that is applied to any article design should be applied or applicable to any article by industrial process it is registered for 10 years and can be extended by 5 years so it should not be functional and should not be artistic in nature like painting sculpture so now let's look into geographical indication so what is geographical indication it's may be agriculture natural manufactured uh, product handicraft industrial goods originating from a defin uh, definite geographical territory so product is considered to be manufactured in a territory or uh, the quality or you know, one of the activity of producing or the preparation raw material should be from that territory gi conveys an assurance of quality distinctiveness which is essentially attributable to the fact of origin in that definite geographical locality gi promote economic prosperity of the producers of good produced in a geographical territory so some of the example can we see blue pat blue pottery of jaipur kani sol of jammu and kashmir kulu sol of himachal pradesh madhubani painting of bihar nak uh, nakki kas katha of west bengal so muga silk from assam so uh, mysore silk that is uh, from mysore rajasthani kathputlis naga mircha from nagaland this is a tanjore doll so the i this is gi logo and slogan invaluable treasures of incredible india so now let's come into plant varieties so what is so plant varieties they get protection under in plant varieties and farmers right act 2001 for far reaching legislation and uh, with regard to establishing right for farmers to save use exchange and sell farm saved seed so a plant variety should be for noble distinct uniform and stable uh, produce for a seed which is noble distinct uniform and stable over generation they are protected under plant variety farm, farmer producers farmers right act so now let's look into traditional knowledge traditional knowledge 
means we all know haldi neem all these are traditionally known items known component and they are already known from generation and the knowledge is passed on from one generation to another so biological diversity act 2002 was enacted for the preservation of biological diversity in india and provides mechanism for equitable sharing of benefit arising out of the use of traditional biological resources so if you look at registered geographical indication maximum maximum is from karnataka then from tamil nadu then maharashtra these are the developed uh, states having maximum gi so can we know that gi is uh, promoting economic welfare to the producers to the artisans to the person who is producing the producers authorized users so and here we can see very less in this reason so we have to come up with more gis in this reason also the gi application is very less so after that traditional knowledge digital library this is an initiative by csir which was set up uh, in 2001 uh, along with the ministry of ius this is having a database of uh, 2 lakh practices of unani or maybe 3 lakhs or more than that of unani ayurveda siddha yoga so that outer countries doesn't uh, file a patent because there was in usa or some other countries they were filing patent for basmati for uh, curcumin these are already known our product traditional product so a patent cannot be applied for that now let's look at the trade secret so trade secrets are confidential business information r and d information software algorithm confidential data which if leaked will cause a substantial financial loss to the owner for example all like kfc chicken but do you know the recipe of kfc chicken is not known even macd we don't know the recipe of macd also so this uh, and you can see some of the famous uh, biryanis also so their recipes are undisclosed and they are only their franchisee will have uh, the combination of masalas for getting that taste and flavor so uh, and even uh, the r and d information the information of the uh, in financial records the company's turnovers uh, uh, customers record then uh, the list of consumer devices method consumer profiling now uh, artificial intelligence data so all these are confidential which help to enhance the trade and keep the trade secret so that the trade is uh, prosperous over the year so ip offices in india uh before looking at we have to know that once uh, ip is uh, uh over uh, ip period is lapsed or abandoned that can be available in public domain and it can be used by any person interested for our i am doing a research for example see uh, let's say in anti inflammatory properties of a substance so i can go in the advanced patent search uh in the indian patent office i will write anti inflammatory i will look at the hundreds of patent then i will find out the abundant patents then i will after finding the abundant patent i will read those abundant patent and i will try to find out what the, those abundant patent have used what material what process everything and i can value add to my process value add to my experiment and there is a learning in this so uh, now let's look at patent offices kolkata delhi chennai mumbai these are the four design wing is only in kolkata then uh, semiconductor devices office delhi trademark registry that is mumbai delhi kolkata chennai ahmedabad geographical indication chennai copyright office in delhi so how can we contribute how can you contribute to ipo you have to be innovative we have to restrict ourselves from buying fake counterfeit products we have to think outside the box and produce original work so ip reforms over the year the ip as professor has already explained before me national ipr policy so i don't want to go into depth to it but uh, let me let you let me let you know that national ipr policy came in uh, 2016 and approved by the uh, union cabinet on 12 may 
16. So uh, that is, and uh, along with that startup and innovation policy scheme came, which was uh, introduced in January 2016 on pilot basis for three years. Then patent amendment rules in 2016 came, then 2017 trademark amendment rule came whereby reduction in fees for small entities, rules for sound mark registration, simplification of process, then expedited examination for startup was introduced in 2017. <coughs> 2019 patent amendment rule 2019 whereby expedited examination broadened to include female applicant, small entities and government bodies. So in 2020, GI amendment rules, 2020 came whereby reduced fee for registration of authorized user of a particular product. Patent amendment rule 2020 was simplification of the statements of working of patent, reduction in fees and fees for small entities. And in 2021, Copyright Amendment Rule 2021, Design Amendment Rule 2021, Patent Amendment Rule 2021, and hereby reduction in fees for educational institution. So focus sector, startup and MSME. Uh, so our focus sector, focus sector should be startup. MSME. We can uh, encourage our student to come with a startup technology transfer startup since but uh, startup has to be come because uh, our job provider is uh, the startups and msme maximum of us are employed uh, in startup maximum indians are employed in startup and msme so reduction in fee for small entities and startups filing uh, and processing fee reduced to 80% as compared to large entities, same as for individuals. So scheme for facilitating startup intellectual property protection in 2016, where this scheme initial date was ending uh, initial, from initial extended uh, to March 31st, 2023, where the initial end date was 2020. So 510 patent facilitator and 392 trademark facilitator registered under the startup intellectual property protection scheme, fifth thing scheme. And then recent reforms in patent, uh, if we know the filing, if we know the examination, the backlog has been reduced, increase in filing, the patent filing increased by 46%, clearing backlog and reducing pendency. Examination, a patent of patent examination application has in, increased around threefold since 2016. Time required for patent examination reduced from average 72 months in 2015 to an average 15 to 18 months at present. So chemistry, biochemistry, polymer, electrical, mechanical, six months is the time required for examination. The highest time, uh, biotechnology, textile, uh, patents, uh, taking 24 months, then biomedical, food, 20 to 21 month, computers, uh, material, and everything, 18 months, uh, communications, 15, metallurgy, electronics, 12 to 13 months. Recent reforms and in impacts trademark. So 50% reduction in fee uh, filing for startup small entities. Then simplification of process eight forms uh, instead of uh, 74 forms, which were early, earlier there. So process of determining a well-known mark was laid out and incentivizing e-filing, meaning giving fee rebate, 10% uh, fee rebate reduced rules related to sound mark registration formalized increase in filing trademark filing shoot up to 66 percent in 2021 to 22 compared to 2016 to 17 clearing backlog and reduced pendency the period for examination of new trademark application is reduced from 13 months to less than 30 days so this is a big achievement trademark is registered in about six months and if there is no objection or or objection file as compared to three to five years required earlier so recent reforms in copyright the copyright amendment rule 2021 introduced a mandatory annual transparency report to be issued by copyright societies and traceable 
traceable system for collection distribution of royalties including management of undistributed royalties stakeholders consultation initiated in contest of section 31d of the provisions so now let's look at the data can we see patent 1.5 time grow, growth to 5 time growth trademark rule trademarks filing two time growth then copyright filing is 1.4 time growth so the global innovation index has reached to 46 so patent application filed by indians non indians the patent application filed by non indian patent application filed by indians can you see the data how fast this is going that means india is far more than a developing nation india is the biggest consumer uh, in the uh, world, if I, uh, or in the second, third position, maybe. So we are a, a consumer, maybe in manufactured sector, or we are having a very large market. See our telephone markets or see our food and medicine market. So national IPR policy, I will not explain this because professor has already explained before me. So I don't think I have to explain this once again. These are the seven areas, outreach, generation of IPR, legal, legislative framework, administrative and management, commercialization of IPR, enforcement, adjudication, human capital development. So innovative uh, practices. So setting up of IPR cell and framing of institute IP policy for academia. So every academic institution has to frame up their own IP cell. An institute must focus on the traceability of research output. If they are funding some research output, if some high value added research going on, there should be a traceability to that and protecting your invention through patent. Then there are some, they should generate some IP right. If, if not patent, there must, must be publication or some other uh, IPs must be there out some other contribution. So the process need to be easier, faster without interfering in publication, thesis completion, which are often primary focus for researcher. We have to, uh, if we publish some data, then uh, within one year, we have to go for patent. And if we fail, the patent will be, uh, their comment will come that your patent has been anticipated by prior publication. So this should not be there. Now, once again, let's look at the global innovation index. 46 position is a great achievement for India from 81 to 46 in just five years is the biggest achievement. So now it's time for Indians to take up the rightful place in the global arena of creativity and innovation, not only as a creator, but as an innovator and also as an IP owner. So uh, with this, I stop my sharing. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for your enlightening session. Uh, we have a few questions on the chat box. So the first question is, uh, what is the place of TRIPS agreement in multilateral trading system? Okay. Uh, actually, I cannot remember the exact place. It must be uh, Doha or I will check and I will uh, give because I cannot remember the exact place. I have to also, I have to check. Okay. Thank you. Next uh, question is uh, how to register the intellectual property rights for a scientific project or idea? How and where can this be done? Uh, how to register the intellectual property right for scientific? Scientific projects and ideas. We have to register by going to Indian Patent Office. We have to check the Indian Patent Office. You write Indian IP Office in Google and there you can check, go to the website. Then uh, there is a column is there, IP filing that you check the patent column, then click the filing. You have to create the login IDs. And you, before that, you have to keep your documents ready. Before that, you have to check the sets of form fees. And uh, if at all, uh, you can find a patent agent, it's well and good, or you can do yourself. You have to get ready with your provisional specification, your uh, details, complete details. You have to create a login ID, user detail, and you can proceed with the filing fees and uh, all. So you can just file initially. Then there is a publication after 18 months and within 42 uh, months, you have to file a request for examination that will, that will cost you 4,000 as an individual. So uh, once you file a examination, you will be given 
first examination report from the patent office on your registered email address so you have to give the counter detail of uh, to that what are the things lacking then once the examiner is satisfied once the controller is satisfied your patent <coughs> your will be granted and every detail is in the official journal of the patent office thank you ma'am uh, the next question we have is uh, are there any effects of intellectual property rights protection in the technology transfer content of economic development mm. any intellectual property right in the technology transfer content on economic development uh, are there any intellectual property protection in technological transfer develop. content transfer content? content on economic development on economy yes yes there are you can see uh, intellectual property right if you look for the economic development uh, even the grassroots innovators are given patent protection you can go and check the nif india uh, website you can find the national innovation foundation where uh, there are uh, grassroots innovators are awarded also they are given biennial award from the president and because they have done some social innovation when we say social we do not look for the profit margin we look something for example a herbal innovation for diabetic curing and that person is curing uh, is a traditional healer so he is a curing person nearby to his area uh, so that is a social innovation so they are this formulation can be given granted a process patent okay so the last question that we have on the comment box is uh, how is ip administered around the world ip administered in the world see we have to look the international arena the first time you know the united nation uh, was formed after the world war so there was a specialized agency of united nations wto world trade organization and prior to that gut was from gatt general agreement on tariffs and trade which then formed into wto then wto handed over the work to wipo world intellectual property organization and this is a trips is a trade related aspect of intellectual property rights is a specialized body of wipo so which is in uh, geneva the headquarter is in geneva so we have to the maximum development uh, are paris geneva they are having our offices there so uh, uh, in intellectual intellectual world arena wipo is uh, doing a handling of the intellectual property right at the world but wipo is not uh, filing any patent while if we want to file any international patent we have to take pct route pct means up uh, earlier what was a paris conventional route for example if i want a patent in china i had to go and file a patent separately with chinese patent office but now there is a union of member nation whereby one single patent will be when taken under pct route will be valid for in all other member nations for example china europe europe then america i will get a patent in all the nations if i go through pct route so in this way international arena is um, a patent is managed in international arena any more question uh, there is one more question uh, from ankur gogoi if a undergraduate student wants to make his uh, protocol of his innovation how can he get the fund from the institute or from other sources and uh, how can he spread his innovation uh, he, there is many funding agency you just look at the website of ministry of education because my ppt would go very long that's why i have not included you can look at the website of dst there is a specific funding from ministry of education called kapila uh, that is kalam's uh, name is something that like that so that funding is providing fund for undergraduate student to file the patent once your patent is ready you are having a prototype a working model you can take the fund from ministry of education or dst or civil similar there are several schemes of dst if you are a undergraduate college student you can get fund from ministry of education then dst byrac uh, dbt there are many funding agencies so you have to write a proposal get it checked by your professors and you have to discuss with your professor because you need a mentor and guide in that so somebody who need to uh, defend you in everything so being a undergraduate student uh, or you can do it single handedly also if you are having if you have done a sufficient research on that 
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I don't think we have any more questions. So we have almost reached the end of the second session of the week long online international workshop on intellectual property rights for the promotion and protection of innovations. I, on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to ma'am for giving us her valuable time and for enlightening us on the different aspects of intellectual property rights in developing countries, starting from the old arena to the current arena and talking about the different aspects of IPR for economic development of a country. So thank you, ma'am, on our behalf. I would also like to thank our collaborating partners, DPIIT, Tejpur University, and IPEG, the City Law School, City University of London, for collaborating with us. And last but not the least, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our participants and faculty members for staying connected with us. I have already shared the uh, feedback link for the session. And uh, I would request everyone to fill up the feedback form. And hopefully, we'll meet tomorrow for the next session. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you all uh, and for being patient and listening to me. Uh, thanks a lot to everyone. And I hope uh, I also get to know the feedback of my session, that uh, whether everybody can understand or not. Because understanding international arena and it is difficult along with the Indian system, it's need a even much longer duration. But I hope the upcoming speakers, uh, since it is an international uh, uh, session uh, for five days, upcoming speakers will take you to international arena in much depth. So in one hour, what I could do, I have tried. Uh, so all the best for the upcoming session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.